guys, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Um, in today's video, uh, we got a Porsche. Um, the same Porsche we've been building, but this time we actually have a pretty sick upgrade from Keys Motorsports, which is a GT4 front bumper conversion. Now, I've seen a few other people do this on YouTube. It is nothing, you know, new, but uh, the direction I'm going with this build is gonna be completely custom by the time you guys will see it. Like, night, like super nice wheels, custom livery, not livery decals, some people might, you know, for me it's a livery, you know. But anyways, uh, full interior is gonna get fully customized as well. Everything I'm gonna try to customize it to be as unique as possible. And, uh, you know, just going through the customization stage, I, I figured the GT4 bumper was the nicest thing for this car. There's really nothing else that really makes the front of this car look as good as the GT4 front bumper. But, that being said, um, you don't wanna buy just a bare bumper GT4 bumper because you're gonna be missing all of this stuff. When you buy the Keys Motorsports bumper, it's gonna come with absolutely everything, including the fog lights. And look how sophisticated these are. These actually have modules crazy. on them. What the heck? I've never seen aftermarket fog lights or headlights have modules on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, so those actually should be pretty bright and nice. Um, so yeah, that being said, we got black grills, all the plastics, uh, the sensor PDCs, everything. Um, and the front bumper already pre-painted because I wanted to kind of get it all done in this video. Uh, beautiful, I mean, it is a little dirty right now, but we'll clean it up once we get it on the car. Beautiful GT4 front bumper. Um, this car had some front end damage. I ended up replacing the fender, the side skirt. Um, so now we're throwing on the GT4 front bumper. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start assembling this bad boy and slap it on the car. So guys, the good news is the bumper is officially done. It does look super good. It does look super aggressive, but it honestly took way too long. I think it took about four to five. I think it, like how long would that take? It took you like two hours. Probably. Two hours. Typically a bumper shouldn't take that long, but this car had a million things. Um, I guess because it's a higher end bumper, it has all the little things. So for example, it had the air ducts you also put on the front coolers uh, to actually work with this bumper. So it's gonna look as OEM as possible. Um, it came with the super nice fog lights, which wasn't really hard to put in. The hardest parts, honestly, was the meshes. Uh, those were honestly a little bit difficult to put in. And the 3M that came um, from factory for this one to put this up was not that great. So we're gonna, we went ahead and just put some uh, real 3M. I think it was like some cheap uh, double-sided tape. Uh, but anywho, now that we got that all situated, uh, we also got the bumper bracket on there. We got it riveted on there. And then we also got the other bumper bracket right there. So that's looking mighty fine. The bump is officially done. So I want to go ahead and go to... I wanna go ahead and get it on the car, but before we do that, uh, these headlights break and chip very easily. This section right over here cracks like crazy. There's a million headlights on eBay with all this section cracked up. Uh, we don't wanna crack our headlights. We uh, we just got these, so yeah. They are super easy to uninstall. It's literally one push and a pull, that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that so that we can finally actually get on the front bumper. So guys, uh, I just ran into a small little hiccup that I completely forgot about. So the yeah, passenger side, we have the harness actually plug into the fog light. The driver's side, I completely forgot, was completely disintegrated. I went ahead and actually threw it in there. It is completely disintegrated. I just called Porsche. Thankfully, they can have it in by Tuesday of next week. So yeah, that's currently the situation for that. So I can't really start putting together anything just yet, mainly because if I get this bumper on there, button it all together, um, there's no going back. So yeah the bumper just gonna be kind of chilling here until i get in that harness so i'll get back to you guys when i get that in i mean honestly i do also need the clip that kind of goes over here to hold the bumper um so i'm just gonna go ahead and place an order on that as well and then uh hopefully when those two come in the bumper can be on the car 100 percent uh so yeah for you guys it'll be literally about five seconds for me it'll be probably a few days to a week so a few days later guys you finally got everything in for the porsche and yeah that's a new uh new windshield i'll throw in that kind of footage right now But yeah, 
basically got a new windshield on the car. Uh, it took me some time, honestly, to be able to actually throw on the front bumper, mainly because of this harness right over here. Thankfully, Porsche actually had it. We got it finally sent out over here. We can install that. And then this actually was needed uh, to put on the bumper. So for those of you guys who need a part number, right there. This, you need on both sides. I have one good one. And the last thing is this right over here. Uh, this is the wheel liner, uh, finally. Finally, finally, finally. If I can get all this stuff installed, including the front bumper, this car is literally gonna have zero accident damage. Um, it does have some electrical issues, but that should be, you know, separate from the damage. The damage is all over here. Find all the parts to finish that up. And then we can button everything up together. This car will be looking like a clean title. And then from here on out, it'll just be upgrades and just repairing a few things. Without further ado, I really wanna go ahead and get on this front bumper. So, so let's go ahead and plug in the harness, plug it into both sides of the bumper and get this bad boy on. The bumper's looking so, so, so good. Um, so honestly, the gaps are looking A1. Super happy about all of that. That's all looking absolutely perfect. Um, I do need to adjust that just a little bit, but there's nothing too crazy. Both sides are lining up perfectly as well with the headlights. So I'm super excited about that. Now, I actually need to remove both wheels, get the front end up because it actually comes with the bottom skid plate there. And then I also have to put in both fender liners and attach the bumper on, e on both sides as well. Um, getting these retainer clips on each side over here on the bumper are a pain in the butt. Um, but I heard they're also super a pain in the butt for OEM bumpers too. So it's not the fact that it's an aftermarket bumper that makes it hard. It's literally, it's a Porsche bumper, which makes it hard. I'm super excited to put on the headlights. It's gonna look so, so, so good. Um, but anyways, as of this point right now, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up that side to get both sides up in the air and just start binding up absolutely everything behind this bumper so we can get on those headlines. And guys, about a few hours later, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the harder bumpers I've ever put on. But thank the Lord, it is officially put on. And I'm also super happy that every piece of this kit was actually used, which means that every piece of this kit was actually functional and it all fit, um, which I'm super happy. There's a lot of times I get bumper kits where some of the pieces just don't fit, so I don't end up using it. Um, and I was a little afraid that the piece that sits underneath the bumper that attaches to the car, the gaps are gonna be so off because it's aftermarket. But honestly, guys, it honestly fit pretty good. I think for an aftermarket product on the undercarriage, um, it was like an eight out of 10. And for the bumper fitment, I mean, you guys could just see for yourselves, look at that gap right over here. That looks fantastic. Look at this gap over here from the side. That looks fantastic. And the bumper just overall looks amazing. Even the fog lights, I got it working. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, so the bumper for me, honestly, because it really changes the entire car and it makes this a normal Cayman turn into kind of like a super sporty, honestly, now looking like a GT4. So this is technically for me, I'm gonna rate it a 9.5 out of 10. Looks absolutely amazing. The reason I'm going, not gonna go 10 out of 10 because if someone asks me, is this aftermarket? It is, but it looks fantastic and I absolutely love it. That being said, uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and throw on both headlights uh, and the front end is pretty much done. Literally, that's it. No more damage to this car. Um, and also all the shieldings down here, I can finally put them back on. And I actually forgot, there's one more screw. So one more screw all the plastics, hopefully the gaps and everything look absolutely perfect. We'll know that literally there is no issues with fitment once I put all the plastics in here because the plastics are either gonna sit over this if this is too much, you know, too close inwards or the plastics are gonna be having a pretty big gap and you actually see some of the metal, which will be super ugly. So without further ado, let's go ahead, put in all the plastics, put on the headlights and see this bad boy put together. Like what the, I don't even know what to say. That is just, now that, 
That's a good looking car. So I am super happy with the results of this front bumper. Honestly, guys, when it all put together, I don't know if you guys can see with the hood, it has a clear bra on there. Um, and it's really throwing off the whole vibe. I actually removed most of the clear bra that was on this fender um, because I wanted to see how close together the paint was um, with the painted bumper and it's literally like factory. So I'm super happy about that. I just noticed this little speck of paint crack right there, like a little paint chip. Super upset about that. I don't know. That, that I just painted this fender, so I must have just done that. So things happen in life. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is the previous owner actually clear broad this entire car. Both fenders were clear broad. The bumper was clear broad. The hood was clear broad. Um, the side skirts were clear broad. The doors are clear broad. The quarters are clear broad. I don't think the real tailgate or the roof was, uh, but also the rear bumper was clear broad. The unfortunate thing is you guys can clearly see um, from the hood and the, and the bumpers that if I go ahead and ceramic coat and polish the whole car, it's gonna show us two different colors for the things that are clear broad and things that are not. So unfortunately, I'm probably gonna have to unclear broad the entire car, which was like originally a $6,000 uh, installation, I'm sure, because clear broad, I think literally just the front end is like two grand. So the entire car is probably at least like six grand. Um, so that would've been super cool to have, but you know, considering it's a salvage title car, it's a small price to pay, uh, but it does mean that the paint underneath the clear bra uh, is absolutely amazing. So I'm not gonna go ahead and take off the clear bra because there's ways to do it without messing up your paint. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take it down to my boy Jose, who's actually gonna be doing a three-step correction on the entire paint job and ceramic coating this entire car because I want it to look absolutely beautiful. But guys, just, just, just check out this front end. Oh my God, it looks so good. You guys can also see the brand new windshield that was kind of installed out of nowhere in this video. Um, basically to kind of fill you guys in on what exactly happened with that windshield, I have a brand new windshield installed out of nowhere, literally. Um, I reached out to Porsche because I called up a few of my normal guys that do my windshields and they said, no, we're not going to touch it. No, we're not going to touch it. A million people are like, no, we're not going to touch it. And I'm like, really? Because it's a Porsche? Like, I, people have done a lot of other cars that were super high end that were BMWs for me, but when I touch a car, this car particularly because it's a Porsche. I'm not sure. Maybe some weird sensors. Maybe it's just something's really fragile. I'm not sure exactly what's the deal with it. Um, but unfortunately, I had a lot of people that said they wouldn't do it. So. I, I didn't know who else to call, so I actually called Porsche themselves. And with my discount, because I have a dealer discount and all that kind of stuff, um, the windshield was a grand and installation was 1100 So for $2,100, I was like, there must be a better way. So I don't know. I just kind of typed in windshield replacements. And then the first thing that came up was Safe Light. I'm not shouting them out by any means, um, but they really had a good price going. So they actually are the same company that's used for my insurance company. A bunch of insurance companies use Safe Light. But I typically assume when a company is very well known, they're not going to be cheap. And especially on a Porsche, um, they actually came out here and they gave me a quote online uh, with the rain sensor. Their quote was only, what was it? Uh, 500 and like $40 with new wipers and ceramic coat on the windshield. So for $540, that's insane. And then on top of that, uh, they had a discount on their website, $80 off coupon. So I actually got the windshield installed with new wipers and ceramic coat on it for 480 out the door with taxes and everything so i mean i think i, I think i robbed them <laughs> i don't i don't even know how they got the windshield that cheap i literally thought they got to come over and be like oh let's go ahead and try to fix this windshield because i couldn't believe the price installation it took them like two hours too um and they actually came here so that was actually mobile too porsche would actually have to take this to them so again, crazy stuff, super happy with how that actually worked out. Um, now we do have a couple more mods for this thing. We do have a couple more upgrades for this thing. And then this thing still needs to get kind of sorted out. It does have a few more faults for the seat belts. It has a few more faults for the tensioners. Um, and also has a few more faults um, for the rear trunk, rear wing, and the cooling system. The cooling system still having some kind of issues with it behind the scenes. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, we did kind of do a coolant flush in the last video, but I'm still having some issues with it. It's not actually apparently getting through the whole system. Apparently this car takes six gallons, six gallons of coolant. So that's a lot of coolant because I'm assuming a, a lot of coolant sits up here and has to go all the way to the back. So that's be coolant filled throughout the entire, all the hoses and the hoses are like this thick. So it kind of makes sense why I need six gallons, but that's a lot and it's only taking like two gallons. So I'm not really too sure why. And then as soon as I kind of let it run for about five, 10 minutes, uh, it just kind of wants to shoot all the coolant out. So it could be the fact that the module that's preventing a bunch of things of working is part of the cooling system, but it also could mean that the water pump could be bad, which is like super weird, uh, but it's a possibility. So as of right now, the damage to this car is resolved. The aesthetic damage of this car is resolved, literally including the wheel liners, all the pieces, all the trims, it's all put back together. It's looking absolutely pristine. All the suspension is good to go. 
So I'm super happy about all of that, honestly. I'm super, super, super happy about all that. But yeah, video soon, guys. I'm hoping one of the next couple of videos is just literally gonna be mod after mod after mod, and then behind the scenes, I'm gonna try to figure out all the electrical things and up to you guys when I figure that out. Nobody wants to touch this car. So when rebuilding a Porsche, just make sure you guys have some contacts out there for coding, for diagnosing, and just simple jobs like doing cool and stuff, uh, because no one that I know that has dealt with my BMW stuff wants to touch this car. So that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but uh, again, I'll kind of keep you guys posted. Without further ado, it's gonna have to conclude this video. I'm super excited with the direction of this build and I'm sure you guys are gonna love it by the time I'm done with it. Um, so yeah, if you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash the like button. But without further ado, love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.